Good day everyone! Welcome for today's virtual lesson regarding on plant cells. I'm Miss Lara Kate Butangan, one of your instructors for this lesson. I hope you're all ready to dive into some exciting learning. For a brief introduction of our lesson about plant cell, plant cell is the basic unit of all plants. Plant cells like animal cells are eukaryotic, meaning they have membrane bond nucleus and organelles. For today's session, we are going to learn the different organelles that composes the plant cell, as well as their importance and functions, such as the organelle, mitochondria, cell wall, nucleus, and others. We are also going to learn what are the differences of plant cell to an animal cell. For example, the presence of chloroplasts on plant cells and its absence on animal cells. Moving on, class, to our lesson objectives. At the end of this uh, lesson, you are able to enumerate the parts and functions of the plant cell and its organelles. You will identify the differences of the plant cell and animal cells. And lastly, you will be able to relate the importance of plant cells in your daily life. Okay, so to begin with, let's start with this question. What is plant cell? Plant cells are eukaryotic cells, as we mentioned before, with a true nucleus along with specialized structures called organelles that carry out certain specific function. So like the animal cell, plant cell also have the organelles that um, carry out certain functions. Next, as we can see here, we have a Venn diagram that shows the differences of the animal cell and plant cell. On the middle, we can see their similarities. First, they have both mitochondria, ribosomes, plasma membrane, endoplasmic reticulum, both the rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, nucleus, and Golgi apparatus. Okay, so after identifying some of the organelles present in plant cells, let's discuss each of them. So starting off from the cell wall. Cell wall is a rigid layer located outside the cell membrane and its primary function is to protect and provide structural support to the cells. What distinguishes an animal cell from a plant cell in terms of shape? So let us observe first. So animal cells have a round structure whereas the plant cells are rectangular in shape, correct? So this is due to the cell wall's existence which gives the cell its shape and structure. Now you may be wondering what is the purpose of plants having these cell walls? So plant cell requires a strong framework in order to develop up and outward which explains why this cell wall became so important to plants. The plant as a whole would collapse in the absence of these cell walls. Do you believe there is something inside the cell wall? If you do, then you are correct because it does contain something called microfibrils, cellulose, and the most significant component of the cell wall called the plasmodesmata. Are you familiar with this term? If not, let us read the definition together. So plasmodesmata is a channel through the plant cell wall that allows molecules and substances to move in and out of the cells. So plasmodesmata acts like a bridge that helps in the transfer of nutrients and other chemicals from one cell to another. This is unique to plants and algae where it is essential for growth since, in contrast to animal cells, plant cells are immobile or something that is stationary. Next, we have here the cell membrane. So cell membrane is a semi-permeable membrane that is present within the cell wall. 
it is composed of a thin layer of protein and fat. And its primary function is to regulate the entry and exit of specific substances within the cell. So it is another layer that protects and guards the organelles inside the cell. Moving on to cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is responsible for holding the component of the cell and protects them from damage. The organelles are arranged and held together by this gelatinous liquid called the cytoplasm, which is made up of water and other molecules. And there are numerous organelles this cytoplasm holds, starting with the nuclear membrane first. Nuclear membrane is the outer covering of the nucleus. It separates the nucleus from the cytoplasm and helps to protect its content. So what is this nucleus? Nucleus is the one who controls and regulates the activities of the cell. This is responsible for storing DNA required for cell division and growth. Inside the nucleus, we can locate there the nucleolus. Nucleolus, it produces cells, protein, producing structures and ribosomes. So what is this ribosome? Ribosomes are the smallest membrane-bound organelles. It is also referred to as the protein factories of the cell. So if the nucleolus produces more ribosome, the plant will grow more quickly. Linked to the nucleus is the next organelle called as the endoplasmic reticulum that is in charge of, of sorting, packaging, and processing the ribosome or protein highway. This has two types and we have here the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and the rough endoplasmic reticulum which is closer to the nucleus. Starting off from the rough endoplasmic reticulum, it, is, it plays a significant role in the synthesis of various proteins. So we call it as rough because it contains ribosomes. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum is generally used for the creation storage of lipids and steroids. And it is called smooth because it does not contain ribosomes. Moving on to Golgi apparatus. So this is involved in the distribution of synthesized macromolecules to various plant of cells. Next, we have here the vacuole. Vacuole means space or the storage structure in the cell. Now, let's differentiate the vacuole of plant cell and animal cell. So what do you observe? The plant cell has only one but a larger size of vacuole, right? While the animal cell has numerous vacuole but smaller in size. Therefore, the question is why do plant cell and animal cell differ in vacuole? It is because plant cell need it more to store their food and water because they don't have the ability to move freely like of the animals. Thus, Plant cell need it for them to live longer in unfavorable conditions like cactus who can live longer without water in the desert. Next, we have here the mitochondria. It is called the powerhouse of the cell and is a double membrane organelle found in the cytoplasm of all eukaryotic cells. So it is called the powerhouse of the cell because they burn and break the chemical bonds of glucose to release energy to do work in a cell. Next, we have here the amyoloplast. It is an organelle found only in plant cell that produces or breaks down and stores starches. So it is commonly found in seeds, fruits, tubers, and roots of carbon storage, but they are often found at low frequencies, including leaves, stems, and root for temporal storage. Moving on to peroxisome. 
So, this peroxisome breaks down fatty acids that can potentially become toxic to the cell and convert this toxin to oxygen and water. So, peroxisome acts and defend the cell. Plant peroxisome are also involved in numerous processes including primary and secondary metabolism, development, and responses to abiotic and biotic stresses. Next, which organelle do you think is responsible for photosynthesis? But first, let us recall what is photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants use sunlight to create oxygen and energy necessary to fuel the activity. So, what organelle do you think is responsible for this? If your answer is chloroplast, then you are correct. Because these chloroplasts are the one that absorbs the energy from sunlight and uses it to produce sugar in order for the plants to live and grow. So this chloroplast is a disc-like shape, elongated organelle which contains a green-colored pigment called chlorophyll and it is required for the process of photosynthesis. Now you may be wondering why are the plants mostly green in color? That is because of the chlorophyll that the chloroplast contain. So, this chlorophyll does not absorb much green light. Instead, they reflect it. So, that's why we see plants mostly in green colors. Although some plants are not green, they may be appear red in color like the irisin plant or known as the dahong pula because they do not contain chlorophyll. Now let us test your understanding with a few quick evaluation questions. I'll ask the question and I want you to pause the video to think about your answer. So are you ready? Here's the first question. It is a plant cell organelle that contains a green pigment. The answer is chloroplast. Second question. It is the powerhouse of the cell. The answer is mitochondria. Third. Green pigment that harvests light energy from the sun. If your answer is chlorophyll, you are correct. Fourth, this protects and provides structural support to the plant cell. The answer here is cell wall. Last question, an organelle that maintains the shape and turgidity of the plant cell, making it very important for structural support. It also serves as a storage. The answer here is vacuoles. Okay, so moving on, what have we learned about our lesson for today? Always remember that plant cell plays a significant role in photosynthesis as it enables the plant to grow on its environment. These are eukaryotic cells with a true nucleus along with the specialized structures called organelles that carry out certain specific functions. These organelles are the cell wall, cell membrane, cytoplasm, nucleus, nucleolus, nuclear membrane, ribosomes, smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, vacuole, mitochondria, amyloplast, peroxisomes, and chloroplast. And always take note that the amyloplast is only found in plant cells that produces breaks down and stores starches. And now it seems that you have learned a lot about the plant cell. So now, how can you relate the lesson we discussed in your daily life? So plant cell is the main source why the plants continue to grow. And as for us humans, 
Let us always remember that even the smallest things in our lives matter. Let us value and appreciate every little things that happens to us because big things come in small packages. And also, this enables us to grow and get stronger like the plants do. Okay, so this will be the end of our discussion. I hope you enjoyed, gained some insights and understandings about our lesson. The plant cell and its organelles.